Are you passionate about the Bible, but sometimes struggle to put its teachings into practice in your life? Well, you've stumbled onto the perfect podcast. Today, we're going to dive into scripture, unpack its meaning, and have a lively discussion on how you can use God's word to truly transform your life starting right now. As we explore the scripture, I'll provide you with some thought-provoking questions to help you delve deeper into how these teachings can be applied to your life daily. Remember, if you don't apply the wisdom you find in Scripture, it's just a collection of captivating stories. But when you take those words from the pages and infuse them into your life, get ready for your world to light up with transformation and inspiration. Well, welcome back to the channel, everybody. I'm Wayne reminding you and encouraging you to be the light. I'm really doing this to help myself and others to discuss the Bible and learn the truths on how we can live our life in a way that God, well, hopefully he'll approve of. Now, I like to start each podcast by reading Matthew 5, verses 14 through 16. You are a light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everybody in the house. So today on the show, we're going to discuss the parable of the unforgiving servant. This can be found in Matthew 18, verses 21 through 35. As always, I'll be reading to you from the New King James Version. Then Peter came to him, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Up to seven times? And Jesus said to him, I do not say to you up to seven times, but up to 70 times seven. And after saying that, as Jesus liked to do, he went into this story, this parable, the parable of the unforgiving servant. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. And when he had begun to settle accounts, one was brought to him who owed him 10,000 talents. But as he was not able to pay, his master commanded that he be sold with his wife and children and all that he had, and that the payment be made. The servant therefore fell down before him, saying, Master, have patience with me, and I will pay you all. Then the master of the servant was moved with compassion, and released him, and forgave him the debt. But that very same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants, who owed him a hundred denarii. And he laid hands on him, and he took him by the throat, saying, Pay me what you owe me. So his fellow servant fell down at his feet and begged him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay you all. But he would not, and he went and threw him into prison till he should pay the debt. So when his fellow servants saw what had been done, they were very grieved, and they came and told their master all that had been done. Then his master, after he had called him, said to him, You wicked servant, I forgave you all the debt because you begged me. Should you not also have had compassion on your fellow servant, just as I had had pity on you? And his master was angry and delivered him to the torturers until he could pay all that was due to him. So my heavenly Father will also do to you if each of you from his heart does not forgive his brother his trespasses. So let's take a little bit of a look at the parable Let's go a little bit deeper, as they say. So the parable, obviously, the king in the parable represents God, and the servants represent exactly us. Now, the talents or the money that the servants owe in this story represent the unforgivable debt that we all owe God for showing us the ultimate grace by forgiving us our sins and our trespasses against him and Jesus and the Holy Spirit. I also am sinning against people all the time, my coworkers, my family, my friends, and a lot of the times I don't even know it. But God's forgiven us for all and saving everybody through Jesus' sacrifice on the cross who believes in him. So the story is the story of a servant who begs forgiveness for the debt that he owes the king. Now, I did a little bit of research and I tried to figure out in today's money what 10,000 talents would equate to. And what I could find, and again, I found this online, it could be wrong, but all the figures that I did come across were, were super high astronomical figures that honestly nobody could ever repay. And that's the whole purpose of the, you know, this number that Jesus throws out. It's to let you know that it was impossible for him to pay. But what I read was it was about 275 tons of silver, which in today's money would be over $222 million. 
Now, I don't know about you, but if I was a master here on earth, my, a worldly master, and I had a servant that owed me $222 million, I don't know if I'd be as forgiving. Could I, could I just write that off and forget all about it? The funny thing is in the story, when you go through it, it doesn't seem like there was any real big relationship between the master and the servant. It seemed like he was just another servant of the master. Yet for some reason, the master decided to forgive him $222 million plus dollars. Now, what Jesus is also trying to tell us and teach us in this parable is to watch and not be hypocritical. So after the servant was released of all that debt, what did he do? He should have turned around and released the debt of anybody who owed him, but he did the exact opposite. The servant who owed him 100 denarii, again, I did a little research to see what that would be worth in today's uh, money. That would be worth, as far as I could tell, about $5,800, obviously way less than 220 plus million dollars. But what did the servant do? He laid hands on him and he grabbed him by the throat, shaking him, telling him, pay me what you owe me, and then threw him in prison on top of it. So that is absolutely hypocritical. He didn't learn his lesson at all that the king was trying to teach him about forgiveness, forgiving others. He did not understand and learn that he also needed to extend grace the same way that grace was shown to him. And now remember the very end, right? This is the part that stings the most. And his master was angry, called the servant back, told him, you know what? I'm not forgiving you your sins because of how wicked you've just been to the other person. So he rescinded that offer of forgiveness and he delivered him to the torturers until he should pay all that was due to him. And being that he owed $222 plus million, he was never going to be able to repay that debt. And here's that kicker line, the last sentence in the parable. So my heavenly father will also do to you if each of you from his heart does not forgive his brother his trespasses. You know, I think we need to go back through and read these parables a lot more often because as, as short as some of them are, you can read each one of them in probably under two minutes. The messages that Jesus teaches in these are so powerful. And there's warnings, I think, in every single one of them. And if we would just read them time and time again, it would help us to remember how God expects us to behave in our life. And that kind of goes back to how I open each of my podcasts, where I read Matthew 5, 14 through 16, about us being the light of the world, right? A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everybody in the house. Light chases away darkness, light as the good in us, light that shines and attracts others. So my suggestion is we all need to heed the warning of Jesus and do not be a hypocrite and extend that grace. What I'd like to do now is share a couple stories. I taught this recently, oh, actually last Sunday at church. I happen to work for a homeless ministry, and we do church for the homeless on Sundays. And as part of our church service, it's kind of half teaching. And then the second half of it is we want everybody to open up and share how maybe this might you know, play out in their lives or how it has played out in their lives. So I asked anybody who wanted to share, to share a story of either forgiveness or unforgiveness in their life. So one of the guys raised his hand and he shared a story back from when he was three years old, him and his brother and his family lived in New York. And he says that his brother pushed him out of a three-story window when he was three years old. He fell down, he, he smacked and bounced off one of the air conditioners on the way down, hit the road, and to this day, he's got kind of a hip problem because of it. Quite honestly, it's a miracle that he survived three stories, but, you know, little kids can bounce back faster than adults. So I asked him, was his problem forgiveness? And it was funny because he said, no, no, I forgave my brother a long, long time ago. After all, we were kids when it happened, and he probably didn't understand what he was doing. He may not have realized the consequences of however it happened. And I told him that was great. And he said, but there's one problem. So I said, well, what's the problem? And he said, to this day, my brother will not admit that he pushed me out the window. <laughs> Now, what do you say to that? My response was basically, well, listen, you did your part. You forgave your brother. You did with Jesus what God would have wanted you to do. You forgave the transgression of your brother upon yourself. Now, if he won't admit that it ever happened or that he was, if he won't admit that he was responsible or partly responsible for it, well, that's on, that's on him. He, that's something he's got to work out with him and God. But you 
forgiving your brother did exactly what God would want you to do. Uh, another story that was told by was a gentleman that came in. I would say he's, oh, probably in his late 20s. And he told me that when he was an infant, his mother had died. The way he put it was that his mother had killed herself. Now, he didn't get into any details on it, um, but he said that his mother had passed away when he was an infant. He did make a reference to drugs, so it could have been an overdose. It could have been accidental. And then he went on to say that uh, he did not remember his father, and he doesn't recall ever, I guess, meeting him. I guess he was too young at the time. So because he had never met his father, didn't know where he was, and had no way to contact him, especially since his mother had passed away, he just wrote his father a letter and basically told his father that he was forgiven. And although he wasn't able to mail it to anybody, he just kind of sealed it up and put it aside. And that was his way of kind of closing that chapter in his life. And now he's able to move forward. Forgiveness is a very, very, very powerful tool in your life. And if it's something that you can manage to practice, it is the ultimate thing to bring you freedom in your life. I'll tell you a little bit a uh, story of mine. Now, I had a great upbringing and great parents, and my parents are still around today. Um, but there was a period when I was in my late teens and, and through my 20s that me and my father, I don't think, got along very well. And I, I have a lot of memories of us arguing and fighting. And um, I'm sure from the two different perspectives, we each think it was the other one who was being a jerk. <laughs> But in the end, um, it blew up one day. I'm going to say that this probably went on with us for a good 10 years, maybe even longer. And finally, one day, I got so angry that I like basically challenged my father to a fight in front of my mother, in front of my four-year-old. Uh, I just couldn't take the tension between us anymore. And it, thankfully, it didn't it didn't amount to anything but more of a yelling match. And, and we separated and I left and... We probably didn't talk for a few weeks, and after that, I happened to see my parents over my grandfather's house one day. We ran into each other, and I told him I wanted to talk with him, and a few days later, we got together, and we were able to sit down and kind of hash the whole thing through and talk it out. I was able to share my perspective. My parents were able to share their perspectives, and apologies were said, and we just let it go. At least I can say that I just let it go. I'm assuming that my parents also let it go because we've never had that kind of tension in our lives since then. So it was incredibly freeing for us to be able to sit down, talk it through, and then let it go. So I would encourage you to do some more study on forgiveness. Maybe just go online, type in just biblical study on forgiveness and read the passages that are in there. Not only, as I said, is it freeing, which I think you could hear in the three little short stories I just told you, but as this parable tells us, we're also commanded to forgive. We're only going to be forgiven as much as we forgive others. And as always, you can take this parable and then remember that one day, each one of us is going to be present before the Lord, waiting to hear him say one of two things, well done, good and faithful servant, or depart from me, I never knew you. And that, my friends, is something that none of us want to hear. Thank you so much for joining me today. I truly hope that what we've discussed has not only deepened your understanding of God's Word, but also opened your heart and eyes to the incredible role that you play in bringing Scripture to life and sparking transformation in your own life. Remember, you're an essential part of this amazing journey, and together we're going to uncover even more treasures from the Bible that will help us to enrich our lives. Don't forget to check the show notes in the podcast description for links to free PDF transcriptions of my podcasts and other downloadable teachings. And please don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, and most importantly, don't forget to share this message with a friend or two that you believe need to hear it. I can't wait to reconnect with you in just a few days as we dive even deeper into the transformative power of God's Word. Until then, stay blessed and be the light in somebody's life.